Good morning, and welcome to Calvary United Church. Sam and I are thrilled that you've joined us today, and we invite you now to take a moment to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Mother Hannah had spent years praying for a child. When her prayers were finally answered, she rejoiced in God's faithfulness and dedicated her son's life to serving the one who had heard her longing. In time, Samuel became a great prophet. He served God faithfully his entire life and anointed both King Saul and King David, who each had their own important roles to play in Israel's story. These tales of ancient prophets, of our faith ancestors, are more than bedtime stories. They remind us of the ways God acts in and through our lives, even when times are uncertain. God empowers us not because we are perfect or without flaws, but because the path we walk on is God's path, and the light we walk in is God's light. As our Lenten candle is extinguished, we offer to God those things within us that we long to be touched by mercy and healing. As we face this wilderness of Lent, we need not feel overwhelmed, for God's love is stronger than our fear. May we open ourselves to the peace and mercy God showers upon us this day and always. Amen. Hello, Lenny the Lenten Caterpillar. 
I see that you have another question for our kids today. How should we live? Lenny, you ask our kids some very tough questions for a caterpillar, but I think our kids are more than clever enough to answer. Don't you think, Nora? Most definitely. Okay, so I have an idea that might help us to know how we should live, understand a little bit more. Okay, right now I want you to go get a glass of water or a little dish of water, something with water in it. Each of your family members get your own dish, put it, the service on pause right now, go grab your water, come back, and we're going to do a little activity and have a story. Okay, does everybody have their water? I have mine here. Great, I have a little challenge for you. I want you to try and touch your water without making a ripple. Okay, let's try. Okay, it's not working. This isn't working. I seem to be making a ripple every time. Okay, let's let our water settle down, stop moving, and we'll have a quick story. And then we'll come back and try this water ripple thing again. See if it works. You can keep trying and then telling the story if you want to, but I'm going to let my water rest. So one day, Jesus was talking to some people who knew the law. I think they were lawyers and judges. And they were asking Jesus how they should live and some other tough questions. Jesus asked them to remember the Jewish law and what it said. Well, they were lawyers and judges, so they knew all about this sort of thing. They answered right away. They said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all humankind as you love yourself. And Jesus said, yes, that's how you should live. The lawyers and the judges wanted to make sure that they knew what loving all humankind as they loved themselves meant. So Jesus told them a story to help make them understand. He said to them, one day there was a man traveling down the road to the city of Jericho. But along the way, he was attacked by robbers. They left him hurt and bleeding on the side of the road. He needed help. The first person to walk by was a priest. When he saw the hurt man in need of help, he probably thought to himself, Yuck! I'm not going to go help that smelly, dirty guy over there. Not my problem. Crossed to the other side of the road and walked away. The second person to walk by was a Levite man. He thought to himself, Yuck! I'm not going to go help that dirty guy. He stinks. Not my problem crossed to the other side of the road, and walked away. The poor traveler was still hurt on the side of the road when a third person came along. It was a Samaritan man who stopped and thought, Wow, that guy's hurt. How can I help? This is a problem. So he ran across the road to the traveler, got him up, got him a drink, put on some band-aids, made sure that he got all the help that he needed nearby, paid for his hotel stay. Jesus asked the lawyers and judges which of the people that walked by loved the traveler as they loved themselves. It wasn't the priest, and it wasn't the Levite, that walked away without even asking if the traveler needed help. It was the good Samaritan man who stopped and made sure the traveler was taken care of and safe and sound before he went on. Okay, so back to this water business. Have you mastered it yet? No, me neither doesn't work. No matter how lightly or little you touch the water, you know, how, no matter how fast or any way you want to touch it, it always makes a ripple. It's the same thing when we think of others and love them like we love ourselves. It always makes a ripple. Even if we do small things, it always has an effect on those around us, and we want that effect to be a good one. So what does it look like to think of others right now, to have an effect on their lives? when everything around us is a little different or a lot different than we're used to. It could look like calling your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, church folks, your friends, anybody in your life, and just asking how their day is. Asking your parents if your family is able to donate a little bit to other families in need in our city. It could look like saying a prayer for the people who are working really, really hard to make sure that we're safe right now. It could look like listening to your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa when you have to stay inside and you feel all cooped up. And even though school's out, you still have to do homework. 
And it just isn't fair that you can't stay home and play Minecraft all day. It could look like giving your brother and sister a hug instead of yelling at them. Waving to your neighbors through the window, making funny faces to help them laugh. Or asking for a hug and taking a big, deep breath when you're feeling frustrated and overwhelmed. Sometimes it isn't easy to remember to love all humankind as you love yourself, especially when things are different and a little scary and your mom won't let you play Minecraft all day long. One surefire way to remember is to sing a little song about it. I like to sing the song, and then it gets stuck in my head and I remember it for the next week or two weeks or three weeks. The song is, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all humankind as you would love yourself in love. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul and mind and love all humankind. For our closing children's time today, I would like to share a passage that was written by Ralph Milton. So, everybody, close your eyes. Take a big, deep breath and listen. Let your love spread like a ripple to all those around you. If you feel very small inside, be happy. God's love is yours. If you feel very sad inside, be happy. God will help you feel better. If you think you're not very smart, be happy. God has a promise for you. If you try very hard to be good, be happy. God will help you feel good inside. If you really care about other people, be happy. God cares about you. If you try hard to work for peace, be happy. God says, you are my child. Be happy. You will always be part of God's family. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from the book of Psalms, number 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Word of God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every heart be acceptable unto you, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. Amen. Well, my friends, this feels odd and echoey, being in this space that is so familiar, that feels so much like home, today feels odd and unfamiliar. I'm not quite sure how to preach this way without all of you here. How will I know if my jokes are funny without you laughing? I mean, I'll think they're funny, <laughs> but there'll be no proof. How will I know who's napping? How will I tell if you're feeling the same way I am? Or thinking of the Bible verse before us in the same way I've been thinking about it? Or even better, if you're feeling or thinking differently than me, offering new insight and perspective? I guess what it really comes down to and what I'm trying to say is I miss seeing all your faces. I have to admit, writing this homily wasn't easy the kids were underfoot constantly, bored already after a week at home. Turns out, I'm terrible at homeschooling, though I suspect that comes as no surprise to anyone. The dog is no help, as she's developed an allergy to chicken or something, which has caused a rather nasty fungal infection, so there's that. To top it all off, there's this pandemic rolling around, perhaps you've heard of it. It's unraveling, well, all the things. Because of it, I find myself constantly drawn back to the news cycle, which seems to be changing by the hour, if not the minute. It all makes me feel annoyed, as well as anxious and worried and unsteady. I wonder if you've been feeling any of that too. 
Now, normally in situations like this, I'd come here to this space. I would join all of you in worship, and I would leave feeling better, stronger, after we've been together. That is the power of church, after all. Us being together. So while this feels odd and unfamiliar, it does feel good to know that we are at least in prayer together, that we are all pausing for a few minutes to think of each other and our world in a way I don't think we ever have before, or at least not for a very, very long time. When we began preparing for Lent this year, we had not anticipated any of this. The wilderness at that point was imagined. It was internal, spiritual perhaps, not lacking in purpose or thought or meaning, of course, just a lot less, I don't know, literal. Now, for many of us, the solitude we are beginning to experience presents a different type of wilderness, one that we had not planned for. And you know how much I like plans, and how much I don't like it when plans change. Yet, as surreal as all this feels, it is the truth. And it is real, and it is what we are being asked to face. So I took a deep breath and turned my mind and heart to this time that we'd be sharing together, wondering if the scriptures offered to us on this fourth Sunday of Lent would be of any help. Our call to worship focused on John's story of Jesus and the blind man. That could work. I mean, we could all likely use a dose of grace right now. We could all benefit from being reminded that we are seen and loved by God, even in these challenging times, especially in them. I could stand here and imagine you all here with me, singing along. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. I feel like our eyes are being opened to a lot of things in a minute, helping us see what's really important, what we really need, what is of the greatest value. I promise you it isn't toilet paper, but it might be grace. Our tenebrae, that candle thing we did earlier, drew us into the story of the call of David, how Samuel looked all around until he found the one person who was the smallest, the youngest, the most insignificant, pointed to him and said, you, you're the one who God is calling. That story could work today, too. It makes me think of the people who are being called to do hard things right now. For some of us, the hard thing is staying home. I have to admit, I'm sometimes feeling like I have a congregation full of teenagers right now who keep sneaking out and breaking curfew. I do know accepting help when we don't feel particularly helpless is very hard. Nevertheless, I am asking you to stay home and stay healthy. Others of us will be asked to face great challenge in the weeks to come. I think of our medical staff, our EMTs and police. I think of grocery store workers, pharmacists, long-term care workers, all those people who I assume will be feeling rather vulnerable today. But through David's story, I hear that God calls whether we are ready or not, if we feel capable or not, and empowers us to do hard things. And I'm thankful for those who will rise up in the weeks to come, here at home and all around the world, in ways they never imagined they would be. I hope they will feel our prayers and know that they are unending. This all makes me think of Fred Rogers, who often told a story about when he was a boy and would see scary things on the news. He wrote, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words. And I'm always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, 
so many caring people in this world. What our world is facing right now is unprecedented. It is scary and uncertain. And yet, at the same time, there is so much grace. There are so many people offering to help. And when I see all of that, I realize the words of scripture that I long to hear today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie beside still waters. She restores my soul. It's like spiritual chocolate. These words calm me down instantly, remind me to breathe. They remind me we're not alone in all of this. But today they also remind me to look for the helpers, to find the goodness and mercy that persists in the world in the midst of all this chaos. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, the psalmist sang. It's funny, you know, I've always read those words and been comforted, trusting, hoping that God's goodness and mercy would wash over me every day. God knows I need it. But a few months ago during Bible study, someone gave me the gift of new perspective. He said, when he read that line of goodness and mercy following him, he hoped what it really meant was that goodness and mercy is what would follow him that they would be the gifts he would offer, that he would leave for others as he passed by. Today I hope the same, that the goodness we share and the mercy we extend to others in these challenging days will fill us up until our cups overflow. I pray that as this wilderness time wraps its arms around us and we feel all the things that come when we are in the wild places of living, we remember to look for the helpers, that we remember to ask for help when we need it, offer help when we can. And in so doing, may we all remember that church is more than this echoey space. It is held safely in our very beings, in our hearts, and in our shared faith, in the love and grace we extend to each other. May goodness and mercy be what follow us this day and always. Would you join me in prayer? God of life, spirit who moves with us through these winding and uncertain days, we thank you that you are with us. We long for your strength and hope to wash over the world, empowering those who are rising up in the face of struggle, healing those who are bound by illness, comforting those who are touched with grief and fear. We give thanks that even in the midst of so much anxiety, your gifts of life and joy are seen all around us. So we thank you for laughter, friendship, and faith. We thank you for sunrises, the arrival of peace, and the promise of spring and new life. Hear the prayers of your people this day, from all faiths and all backgrounds, from all cultures and creeds, whatever our thoughts of, our, of you are, this world is in deep need of goodness and grace, and so we turn to you. May we all feel connected to one another, even though we are feeling so far apart. As we say together the words you taught us, calling you by whichever name feels most like home, we say, Our Maker, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. When the road is uncertain, breathe in peace. When the journey is unclear, breathe out love. And no matter what comes, remember this truth. That in life, and in death, and in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone.